We're getting through this argument. Okay. No pot shots at my mom. Fine, no distracting me with your calves. Fine. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the scenes from How I Met Your Mother that hit us right in the feels. He's lying, Robin. He's trying to be strong, but it's killing him. Number 20, Barney and Robin Divorce. Much of the last season of How I Met Your Mother, and indeed the last few seasons of the show, are geared towards Robin and Barney, specifically their wedding. That's why this moment is such a gut punch. How was Argentina? Great. <laughs> it was great. 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 When the gang gets together to talk about how things are going, Barney and Robin reveal they've been having problems. We both hate it when I'm gone. We both hate it when I drag you with me. Neither of us is happy. Is this just not working anymore? After a flashback demonstrates that their way of dealing with them isn't exactly healthy, the two explain that they've divorced. There was an exit ramp right here at the three-year mark. Would you take it? While many marriages don't work out, we still hoped that Barney and Robin would be able to make theirs work, particularly after all that buildup. I made a vow that I would always tell you the truth. We got divorced. Number 19, Barney walks away. Barney doesn't seem like the type to settle down. I want to get married. I mean, not tonight or even to you necessarily, but that's what I want. And if that's gonna scare you off, then I'd rather it scare you off now. That's why when he tells his girlfriend Nora that he does, we believe him when he later confesses otherwise. That's exactly what I want too. When it turns out to have actually been the truth, however, Barney sets intentions to make amends with Nora and tell her that he does want to settle down. I said I lied, that was a lie, and I'm sorry. I'm confused. So am I. He finds her at a cafe, apologizes, and they reconcile. I want to be confused with you. Except the camera pans over and reveals that the whole scene was in Barney's imagination. In reality, he walks away. These stones keep my feet on the ground. It's a sad scene because it's so relatable. How many of us have imagined happiness for ourselves, but not pursued it or self-sabotaged for one reason or another? Number 18, Robin drifts apart from the gang. Following Robin and Barney's divorce, the group worries they'll drift apart as friends often have to choose sides when couples break up. You guys do not need to pick sides. Nothing has to change. Lily makes sure to secure promises that they'll be together for the big moments. Just promise me no matter what, we will always be there for the big moments. However, despite this promise, Robin ends up estranged from the group throughout the years afterwards since her job leads her to travel the world. I mean, Robin's really taking off at work, huh? It's like, Robin Jabotsky, Worldwide News, Caracas. Robin Jabotsky, Worldwide News, St. Petersburg. While the rest of the group stays closer together. The gang is a married couple who I never see anymore about to have their third kid. It's my ex-husband hitting on slutty cops right in front of me. It's a sad reality that people who were once close friends often grow apart from each other, but it still hurts to see it happen to Robin and the group. I, I, I know I've missed a couple lately, but I said we'd always be there for the big moments. Number 17, Ted dumps Barney. Barney and Robin sleeping together complicates things for both of them, and not just because they're friends. Now we go back to exactly the way things were before. Okay. Okay. Right. At this point, Robin and Ted had already dated, and dating the ex of a bro goes against Barney's much vaunted bro code. It also doesn't help that this whole thing takes place shortly before Ted's birthday. There's something that I have to tell you, and I wanted you to be in the best possible frame of mind before you heard it. You slept with Robin. While Barney looks for a loophole in his dubious legal document, he ultimately decides to own up. Except Ted already knows. I don't know if you'd even want it, but if you do, it's yours. I slept with Barney. What? Ted's extended rant on the subject does have its funny moments. Oh, hey, I just remembered um, my mom is coming into town next month. Maybe you'd like to nail her too! But eventually he posits that, much like a box of things he's getting rid of, he's considering Barney's worth to him too. I started putting things in a box and that box was labeled stuff I have no use for anymore. What does that mean? It means 
Maybe you belong in that box. Barney and Ted do eventually reconcile, but it's still sad to see Ted sever their friendship temporarily. Are you saying you don't want to be bros anymore? I'm saying I don't want to be friends anymore. Number 16. Ted breaks up with Victoria. Among Ted's many relationships throughout the show, arguably the third most important after Robin and the mother is Victoria. After a long period apart, the two of them get back together, and Ted even proposes. Will you marry me? Yes, of course. <sighs> However, Victoria is insistent that Ted break off his friendship with Robin, since she's the reason they broke up the first time. You won't marry me if I'm still friends with Robin? Wait, she's the thing that's been holding us back? There, there's just too much history there. Ted reluctantly agrees, but when the time comes for him to tell Robin, he can't do it. Instead, he tells Victoria that Robin is like family to him, and asks if she can handle that. I'm not in love with Robin, but she's like family to me, and uh, I can't end that. So, can you accept that? She can't, and she breaks up with him for good. I really hope you get her someday. Ted's lingering attachment to Robin causes him a lot of heartbreak during the show, and our hearts break along with him here. Number 15. Stella Leaves Ted Ted doesn't have the best luck with weddings. It's my wedding. You have to be there. Okay, okay, I'll be there. Still, he doesn't help his track record when he invites not only his own ex, Robin, to his wedding with Stella, but also Stella's ex, Tony. I wasn't even invited to the wedding. Well, you are now. Stella is upset, telling Ted she's worried about his lingering feelings for Robin. However, ultimately, when Ted finds a note from Stella, it turns out she was merely projecting her own worries about her ex. Stella leaves Ted at the altar to go off with Tony. How do you know that that spark won't come back with your ex sitting up there? While it's easy to say that we want the person we love to be happy, it still cuts like a knife when their happiness means not being with you. Number 14. Lily and Marshall fight over his judge job. Marshall and Lily have a fantastic relationship, for the most part. One of their biggest and only fights occurs in the final season, when Marshall applies for a judgeship without consulting Lily. How could you take that job without telling me? Baby, I'm sorry, but they needed an answer right away. This is a huge opportunity. Despite their attempts to put the fight on pause, they can't delay it forever, and they eventually explode. Lily is understandably furious that Marshall didn't tell her, particularly with their trip to Italy planned. We're going to Italy. But I could be a judge. We can't give that up for what is clearly just a hobby. Meanwhile, Marshall reiterates that the opportunity was time sensitive and his dream. Lily insists that she has never been so selfish, but Marshall brings up a good point. She has. You were more selfish than I have ever been to you. You broke up with me and moved to San Francisco. Both of them are in the right and in the wrong at the same time, so it tears us apart watching them fight. Why are you bringing up San Francisco? That was seven years ago. Because you are being selfish all over again. Number 13, leaving the reception. Ted has a hard time handling Barney and Robin's wedding, so he decides to move to Chicago. Barney. I, ha I have to go. What, now? To that end, he leaves the reception early. On the patio outside, he and his friends say what they believe will be their last goodbyes for a while. Robin, it's been a major pleasure. Major, major pleasure. pleasure. Each goodbye is emotional in itself, with callbacks to many episodes throughout the show. But they all happen one after the other. Good luck out there in Chicago. I'm gonna be kind of jealous of you getting to have Pizzola's pizza whenever you want. You're gonna be in Rome. While this isn't the end of the show or their friendships, it still makes us teary-eyed to look back on everything they've been through. Not to mention, Lily crying makes us cry. Right here. It helped that that was really creepy. I don't want to see you for a while. <laughs> At least Ted and Barney get in an epic high five. Nice working with you, Dr. Bankman. Number 12. Marshall tells Robin what Ted can't. Ted's love for Robin is persistent, as we've mentioned and will continue to mention. As long as the door is even a little bit open, I have this feeling that I'll just be 
waiting around to see if I win the lottery when you turn 40. After laying it all on the line with her, Ted is despondent, even if he refuses to acknowledge it himself. Despite Marshall believing that the two will end up together, if only for the purposes of a bet with Lily, he can still see that Ted is hurting. I can finally move on. This is a good thing. Marshall tells Robin what Ted is unable to. She needs to move out of their apartment. I have to say something that he loves you just way too much to say. You gotta move out. You know. It's the end of an era for the two of them, but at least it opens up some new possibilities for Ted. And it's a great musical moment for the show, too. I like to keep some things to myself. Even so, this gesture isn't enough for Ted, something his move to Chicago proves in the end. For a guy who loves New York this much, to leave it, you must really need to go, huh? Yeah. I really do. Number 11. Robin Doesn't Love Ted This one comes right off the tail of the last entry, but we thought it deserved its own mention. After some confused feelings and a kiss, Ted's feelings for Robin are rekindled. I'll continue this when I get back. He declares several times to Robin that he loves her. While she waffles, Ted insists on a definitive answer. And she gives him one, just not the one he's hoping for. Do you love me? No. Even if you're not a fan of their relationship, seeing Ted get shot down after being so vulnerable is still tough to watch. We're great as friends. It's just, <clears throat> let's just forget I ever said anything. It hits even harder when we see it again in Ted's montage of all the worst times he's been hurt in his life, considering it ranks right at the top. But when I saw that text message and found out Robin was engaged, it was like, <laughs> Times a million. Number 10, Lily leaves Marshall. You know, if you're having these kind of doubts now, what's gonna change in three months? Maybe we just shouldn't get married at all. Maybe not. Marshmallow and Lily Pad are the kind of couple that we all aspire to. Their communication, support, and general adorability are all fantastic to watch. So when Lily accepts a fellowship across the country without telling Marshall in the season one finale, their ensuing fight is rather unexpected. I'm not asking you to understand it. I'm not asking you to be happy about it, I'm just asking you to support it." Although the two try to delay having to deal with the issue by pausing their argument, eventually they break up, leaving Marshall crying in the rain. Even this early on in the series, these two seemed like they would be together forever, so their seemingly permanent breakup hits home. Number 9. Tracy Talks to Max There's someone that I need to talk to. I'll, I'll be right back. The titular mother, Tracy, has her own journey towards Ted Mosby, and it's a tragic one. In her early 20s, Tracy's first love, Max, dies abruptly. Would it be okay if I moved on? She takes many years to get over the loss, though she eventually does start dating again, even if her boyfriend Lewis isn't exactly perfect for her. When Lewis proposes, Tracy takes a moment in private to speak to Max, asking permission to move on. I think that I have been holding myself back from falling in love again. And I think it's because I can't let you go. While she rejects Lewis, she plays a rendition of La Vie en Rose on the ukulele in a bittersweet and beautiful moment that Ted bears witness to. Give your heart and soul to me, and life will always be. Also, Tracy's lost love is foreshadowing for a later entry on our list. Number 8. Lily's Confession Say how much you hate that Robin and Barney are getting married. What? No! Barney and Robin's wedding, particularly its planning stages, proves to be a stressful time. And not just for them. Ted especially becomes stressed as he tries to reconcile his feelings for Robin with his attempts to be a good friend. Robin shouldn't be with Barney, she should be with me. Ultimately, Lily sits him down on the roof to get him to admit to this, and in doing so, she admits something even worse. Sometimes she wishes she wasn't a mother. Sometimes I wish I wasn't a mom. Sometimes I want to pack a bag and leave in the middle of the night and not come back. 
she admits that working with children and being a mother makes it all feel like work, and that she sometimes fantasizes about leaving her life behind. Feeling trapped by what you love is sadly a very relatable experience. I, I spend the whole day taking care of kids and my job, and I come home and it's more of the same. It just, it never lets up. It, it's just really, really hard, Ted. Number seven, Barney's longest second. You weren't at the top of your game, but it was still Oh my pretty. God, I just cheated on Kevin. He is the nicest guy ever. I'm a terrible person. Barney and Robin had a long and difficult path to get to the altar. Following their first attempt at a relationship, they each cheat on their partners to sleep with each other. I wish last night never happened. I don't. Although both feel guilty and attempt to confess their indiscretion, Barney believes that he and Robin can still get together once they have ended their current relationships. Hey, how's it going? Uh, not great. Nora and I broke up. However, although Barney breaks up with Nora, Robin does not tell Kevin, and Barney's realization that she doesn't feel the same about him leaves him feeling like time has stopped. For Barney, the second that would never end was this one. While time is frozen, we're right there with him, and him cleaning up the rose petals right afterward only adds insult to injury. Number six, Marvin Sr.'s funeral voicemail. Marshall, do you remember the last thing your father said to you? Marshall's father, Marvin, tragically passes away midway through the series, naturally leaving Marshall devastated. Baby, are you okay? I hold in my hand the last words my father will ever say to me. During his funeral, Marshall discovers that he has one final voicemail from his father, and while he puts off listening to it, he eventually can't take it anymore, only to be disappointed that it's a pocket dial. He always came through for me, and now he's just gone. And what am I left with? He goes on to express what his father meant to him and how he feels robbed of a chance to hear his final words only for his father to realize that his phone was on and tell his son he loves him one final time. Oh, sorry about that, buddy. Um, anyway, your mom and I had such a great time seeing you. I love you. This moment is a tearjerker, but they're both sad and happy tears. Looks like your dad came through one last time. <laughs> Number five, Barney stealing the basketball net. Barney, I, I got your letter. After years spent in ignorance, Barney finally meets his father. While in typical Barney fashion, he first tries to play up his father's accomplishments, but it turns out he's actually just a typical suburban dad. During a dinner with Jerry and his family, Barney mocks his half-brother and storms out, ineffectually trying to steal the basketball hoop and the backboard above Jerry's garage. Barney, what is going on? This is mine. I don't understand. JJ gets a childhood, a dad, a real family, and a basketball hoop? No, no, I at least get the hoop. I'm taking it with me. When Jerry tries to find out why Barney is disappointed in Jerry's suburban lifestyle, Barney tells him that he wants to know why Jerry couldn't have been a dad to him growing up. He only wants the net as a consolation. Neil Patrick Harris's acting is excellent, and we really feel for Barney here. You're just some lame suburban dad. Why does that make you so mad? Because if you were gonna be some lame suburban dad, why couldn't you have been that for me? Number four, Robin can't have children. I can't have a baby. At first upset at the prospect of having kids, Robin is relieved when she's told she won't be having a child. But Robin is still surprisingly affected when the doctor later tells her that she can't have children at all. Never wanted that. Of course, it, it's one thing not to want something, it's another to be told you can't have it. She tries brushing it off, but she becomes more upset as the episode goes on. And the feels are further piled on when it's revealed that the children she's been narrating to aren't real. If you want to know the truth of it, I'm glad you guys aren't real. This culminates in her breaking down into tears at Ted's attempt to cheer her up. But there's one thing your Aunt Robin never was. She was never alone. Number three, 45 days. Look around, Ted. You're all alone. After a night spent in the bar with hypothetical future versions of himself and Barney, Ted realizes that he's actually been there alone, lost in reminiscences. 
future Ted tells his kids if he really could change the past, he would do many things. But the first thing he'd do would be to visit their future mother. Hi. I'm Ted Mosby. And exactly 45 days from now, you and I are going to meet. He then imagines himself rushing to meet Tracy, giving her an emotional speech, telling her how much he's going to love her when they meet in 45 days, and saying that he wishes he could have had that extra time with her. But I'm here now, I guess because I want those extra 45 days with you. I want each one of them. The moment is performed brilliantly and is made all the more heartbreaking given our next entry. Number two, Tracy's death. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, of course she showed up. What mother is going to miss her daughter's wedding? Although the death of Tracy is foreshadowed several times during the series, including the previous entry, as well as in that scene at the restaurant, Tracy's death still packs an emotional punch. You see, kids, right from the moment I met your mom, I knew. I have to love this woman as much as I can, for as long as I can, and I can never stop loving her, not even for a second." During the finale, just prior to finally telling his kids how he met her, Ted reveals to the audience through a montage that Tracy got sick through an unspecified illness and passed away six years before he started telling the kids his story. Even then, in what can only be called the worst of times, all I could do was thank God. While we may have only spent a season getting to know her, Tracy was a great character and a pivotal part of the show, and losing her really hurt. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Marshall's Dad's Death My dad's death? We've already seen what the aftermath of Marshall's dad's death does to him, but the moment he finds out is easily the saddest part of the entire show. Marshall and his dad are incredibly close, despite living so far apart. So Marshall struggles with whether to tell him about the fertility issues he and Lily are having. What I'm saying is, we love you no matter what. After learning he and Lily can have kids, Marshall attempts to call his dad to no avail. And when he meets up with Lily, she tells him his father had a heart attack and died. Something's happened. Um, your father, he had a heart attack. He, he didn't make it. Marshall's devastation is incredibly authentic, and we're all the sadder because of it. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Is there a How I Met Your Mother tearjerker moment we forgot? Let us know in the comments, and then stop being sad and be awesome instead. When I get sad, I stop being sad and be awesome instead. <laughs> True story. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.